Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Bloom, Group Publisher of Roofing Contractor, and welcome to our Best of Success podcast show. It is such an honor and a privilege to have with me today, Greg Bolt, who is the president of 10X Roofing. Greg, thank you so much for joining me. Jill, great to see you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's really been fun getting to know you over the last couple of months of, as we have connected over email and phone calls um, and learning more about 10X Roofing. But can you please just start off by just telling everybody about who you are and what has your journey been in the roofing industry? Because clearly you've spent many years in the roofing industry. Clearly, by looking at me, I'm an old guy. Oh, stop. I didn't mean that way. <laughs> so, uh, my uncle uh, started our company in Portland, Oregon uh, in the 50s. Uh, my dad joined him in the middle of the 50s. Uh, they kind of hung in there and grew the company to about $3 million over the course of the next 20 years and 30 years. And in 85, I came out of college with a business degree, hoping to go to work somewhere else. I didn't really want to be in the roofing industry. Mm -hmm. My dad said, what are you going to do? I said, I think I'm going to go be a office manager at my buddy's insurance agency. He says, like hell you are. You're going <laughs> to work for me. So uh, I did. And uh, we were obviously a small family business. And uh, after about 10 years, I, I got the hunger to become an organization and uh there was a local roofing company or local tire company called les schwab and uh their guys ran around in all clean white shirts clean blue trucks really organized and i wanted to be the les schwab of the roofing company or the roofing industry in oregon so that was kind of a vision that i'd put in there so you fast forward to about 2005 we've you know been in business uh 50 years. <laughs> We're still under $3 million. And uh, a consultant walks in and kind of sells my dad on uh, some consulting work. And it was like a dream come true for me because this little family business, I wanted to turn into an organization. Now, you guys were, on, were you guys all commercial, residential? What was your business? Good question. So yeah, we, my uncle started as a residential guy okay. uh, and we kind of morphed back and forth and it was my vision to be to get out of residential and become commercial but we always kept you know five or six guys that could go do my commercial customers homes their families homes our families homes because uh, i didn't want to give that business away uh so 2005 we're still three million from 2005 to 2015 we kind of grew those 10 years up to about eight or nine million and about 2015, Tech to America came knocking. They said, hey, uh, you were recommended by one of the major manufacturers, a couple of them, as a matter of fact, as a real quality uh, uh, you know, installer in this region. So, we'd like, to, so we'd like to have you um, consider being an affiliate. So that went well for a couple of years. And, you know, they were an aggregator of, of companies and they said, you know, we just can't buy you. You don't make enough money. And so I focused on that and we refocused on that. And I had four or five mentors in different industries that helped me. And by 2019, we were about a $20 million company wow. and making about four times uh, the profit we were in 2015. And Tecta came up and they waved a big check at me and they said, you know, I got to think about it. So I went and talked to my friend, Brandon Dawson. And Brandon says, you know, roofing is going to grow and it's continuing to grow. It's very hot in private equity. Don't sell. I said, dude, I'm exhausted. <laughs> right. I'm like I'm ready. And I, I got to go. And he says, okay, well, at least ask for more money. So I did. And I got it. And uh, we sold. And uh, I had a three-year earnout which is pretty typical in private equity. Uh, after two years, the president, uh, Dave Reginelli, uh, asked me to come on board on the corporate side. And so for the last two years uh, of my contracting career, I worked as a uh, consultant and I worked on uh, operations and succession planning for the 11 senior presidents at Tech to America. So- oh, and to the point of Brandon uh, 
pointing out in 2019, when I joined TechDit and when they bought me in 2019, they were doing about just under half a billion and they're approaching three times that now. So the industry really has grown and it will continue to grow. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. I want to get their help. You know, guys like that were like me, that are like me, mm -hmm. that are growing and scaling by uh, trying to do it a trial and error versus yeah. putting a plan together and executing it. So I think I'm going to pivot here, Greg, for a minute, because I've got a question I, that I think is really important for everybody listening. Sure. Because you took, there's something that you did before you sold a Tecta that mm -hmm. all of a sudden you were making in those, what was it, took you a couple of years? Took me about from um, 15 to 19, about four okay, years. Four years. So in those four years, mm -hmm. you quadrupled how much take home. What did yeah. you do? What were the top three things that you did? Okay. No, absolutely. Number one, we focused on service and maintenance, recurring revenue. Okay. So we built, uh, my son came out of college. I said, I really want you to, to build and grow. Uh, a service and maintenance department. So okay. our first year, the goal for sales for that department was 400,000. When okay. I left in 2022, uh, uh, that department was doing 5 million in, in recurring revenue. Wow, that's awesome. That was, that was really one of the biggest. It was okay. That was the biggest change. The other piece was I kind of moved from you know, I, I I was hard for me to get out of working in the business instead of on the business. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. I moved up into the coach's booth, you know, up on the football field. And yep. I started looking down on the field and and seeing what was going on. And then, you know, worked really well um, with the team. I had a great operation. I have a great operations officer at the time. He's now the president of the company. Um, and so canning off more of my uh my role to him so that i could work on the business and as i did that we just immediately became more profitable so service and maintenance and moving into the service coaches and, maintenance and, and role duplication you know uh being able to to be more of a president ceo than uh working in the business is a big piece to get that profitability up. Yeah, that's significant, that's huge. And so um, for the contractors that are listening right now that are even considering, I mean, cause private equity is everywhere right now. Um, what would be the top things that you think that they need to do to prepare themselves well, to even be considered to look at? I mean, those are probably the first two, but. Sure. So, um, you know, the typical uh, small business in America is under $3 million and they're stuck there. And they're typically stuck there because they're really good at, if you get to 3 million, congratulations, you've done a great job at probably sales and marketing. You're able to sell $3 million a year mm -hmm. and you're able to produce it. So operations where roofing contractors struggle and where they get looked over and passed on by private equity, number one is understanding finances, really understanding their uh, P&L and balance sheet and what they mean and that they're really the pulse of their company. Mm -hmm. um, and then people, you know, and leadership. So if you're, if you're a good leader, you're going to acquire and keep good people. But if you're a shitty leader, that's the kind of you people are good. People are going to leave. And yeah. so, uh, that's really it. I mean, those those four things, typically, if you were to give yourself a grade, you know, one to five on those four pillars of a business, the typical $3 million business is going to get a three or a four in two of them and a one in the other two. So building a core platform that you can build your business off of is critical. That is awesome. Wow. Great, great insight, Greg. And there's, uh, there's no doubt with uh, your years of experience, not that you look old, because that's not what I was saying <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, it's a little it, gray here. <laughs> I love how 
what you're doing right now to give back to the industry and help and really dive into helping other contractors because it is so important for them to not be stuck and being able to enjoy their families and their lives as well as having a thriving business. Um, yeah. And um, great, very, very cool insight. Um, so Greg, if anybody has any questions for you or 10X Roofing, where do they go? How do they find out more? They go to cardoneventures.com okay. and they can, when they click on, go to the 10X Roofing and uh, my contact will be there. And there's some information on how we help contractors and the events that we have for contractors that want to grow and scale their business. I love it. Sounds great. And uh, if anybody has any questions for us, it is roofingcontractor.com. And while you're there, actually, before I close out, Greg, I think you had you had one more closing story you wanted to share. You know, uh, Jill, thanks. Uh, so, you know, a roadmap helps all of us. And yeah. uh, a picture helps all of us. And, you know, when I first went to a New York, I was a young guy and me and a buddy went and we wanted to see all the sites. You know, we had about four days and we ended up seeing about a third of the sites we wanted to see because we didn't really go with the plan. We just had places and, and things we wanted to do. Fast forward 20 years later, uh, my stepdaughter lives in New York and my wife and I went there and we saw everything we wanted to see about four times what we wanted to see in about the same three days. And, it, you know, it's the same way with a small business. If you have a plan, if you have a map, if you have a picture, then you can go forward quickly and you can bring time and money forward. And that's really what I want to do for roofing contractors. It took me 15 years to go from 3 million to 20 million. There's no reason you can't cut that time in half and go twice as and go twice as big if you have a plan and a, a map in front of you. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks again, Greg. We really appreciate your time. Okay. It's been an honor to have you on the podcast. And if thanks, anybody sir. has any questions for us, it is roofingcontractor.com. And while you're there, make sure you sign up for all our free content, especially make sure you sign up for our free e-newsletters, our website. Follow us on all our social media channels so you can stay up to date on all the great content we're putting out, especially like we are today with Greg. But most importantly, stay safe and healthy, and we can't wait to talk to you soon. Thanks again, Greg. Thanks, Jill. Pleasure.